So you've been using Windows forever and you think that you know everything it has to offer. But I'm here to tell you that you're wrong. Windows has lots of little hidden features and tools just hidden away that you may have never seen or heard of. Some of them are very minor features and others are actually really significant. So I'm gonna go and give you guys a list of 10 advanced Windows features that you probably never even knew about. And first I'm gonna quickly just plug my Instagram. I like to post cool stuff on there. If you guys are interested, you can follow it. It's just at Theo Joe. All right, starting off, we have a cool tool built into Windows called Cypher. This one is great for anybody even a little bit security conscious, but even I didn't know about this until recently. Cypher is a simple command line program that you run through the command prompt that allows you to encrypt or decrypt data on your computer, as well as securely erase files so they can't be recovered after deletion. There are a lot of options when doing this, but if you simply want to encrypt and decrypt something, you just have to type in the command prompt cypher slash e, and then the path of the folder you want to encrypt. And the slash e is just for encrypt, and whereas slash d would be decrypt with the same command. Then it'll just do its thing, and now the folder is encrypted. And you can tell because now the folder should have a little lock, a padlock icon on it, which will also show any other files in the folder as encrypted too. But I think the coolest thing about this is that now any more files that you put into the encrypted folder will automatically be encrypted on the fly as well. So you don't have to keep running the command. The operating system handles everything. Also, the encryption key is tied to your user account, so you don't have to remember any extra password. That way, the encrypted files are not accessible unless the computer is on and you're logged in. But you should also keep a backup of the encryption key, which it might prompt you to do. The other useful feature of Cypher is being able to securely erase deleted data. For this, you would use the slash W parameter, so it's cipher slash W, and then the name of the volume or path, such as just slash E for the whole E drive. And what this will do is take all the unused space on the drive, not any actual files and folders, and overwrite the empty space. This makes it impossible to recover anything that has been deleted. So overall, this is a really powerful and awesome tool, and I bet many of you didn't even know you could encrypt files this way, so it's pretty neat. Next up, we have the Mobility Center. It's just a little window that gives you easy view of some common features you might need on portable devices. It's usually only enabled on laptops and tablet devices, but with some registry tweaks, you could probably get it on desktop too. To run it, you can search for it in the start menu or run it directly with mblctr.exe, that's the name of it. And some of the settings it has are screen brightness, volume, battery mode and percentage, Wi-Fi toggling, presentation mode, external display settings, and maybe even more depending on what version you have. As you can imagine, most of this doesn't really help on desktop, but on a laptop or tablet, these settings are definitely nice to have close by. Moving on, we have another quick little feature, this time for Windows Explorer. You know how in any window there's obviously a search box to look for files, but did you know you can save searches that you make frequently? When you type in a search term, a search tools tab will appear on the left, which has a lot of options. Here you can save a search, which will actually create a file with the search term in it. And you can pin that folder so all your search terms are easily accessible in the left hand bar anytime. And this is especially good if you do a lot of advanced searches, like for specific file types. And these extra filters can be applied by clicking the buttons for kind of file, size, and other properties. So even though Windows Search is pretty slow, it can probably do a lot more than you thought. Up next is a cool little feature for the Windows clock. What you want to do is right click the clock in the taskbar, then hit adjust date and time. Here you'll see a link to add clocks for different time zones on the right hand side. And this is pretty straightforward, but it allows you to not only display one time, but now multiple time zones. And this is great if you have friends in other time zones, or you do business there, or whatever. So when you do that, now when you click on the clock in the taskbar, and below the current time, you'll now see an extra time zone as well that you selected. All right, this one will be number five. Have you ever heard of the math input panel? For many people, it's useless, but for others, it's a lifesaver. So you can open it just by searching for it in the star menu, 
and then when you bring it up, you'll be shown what looks like some graph paper or something like that. And what this tool lets you do is draw out mathematical equations and it will attempt to convert it to regular text. So say I'm in Microsoft Word writing a document and I need to add a little bit of math for some reason. Normally you'd have to painstakingly go through all the math symbols, try to correctly place the symbols as fractions, all that, it's real pain. But with this, you can simply write it out and it will do all that for you. And then you just hit the insert button to paste it into the document. It's not always perfect, obviously, but you can easily fix its mistakes using the select and correct tool. So if it gets anything wrong, which it kind of does reasonably frequently, you can pick from other symbols that it might be. And it usually gets those right at least. So I think anyone who takes math courses in college or high school or whatever should find this especially useful. Number six is another very small and simple but also useful feature, the volume mixer panel. Normally when you click on the speaker icon in the taskbar, you just have the option to raise the whole system volume up and down. But what if you wanna change the volume of just one program? And what you do to do that is right click on the speaker and then hit open volume mixer. And now it will show you not one, but several volume sliders, one for the whole system and one for each individual program. You'll notice when you raise one program above the whole system volume, the maximum of the system will increase to allow this and all the other programs will stay the same. And you can also lower an individual program as well, obviously. And the cool thing is now, when you adjust the total system volume, it will keep scaling them based on the relative volumes you just set. So I think this is one feature that everyone can find useful, but is surprisingly not that well known. All right, next we have a neat little feature in regards to the quick launch bar. You might have several programs down there so you can quickly launch them by clicking on them, but there is perhaps an even faster way to launch them still. Did you know that if you press the Windows key and a number key, it will launch whatever program in the quick launch bar that corresponds to that number. So if you press Win plus one, it launches the first program, Win plus two, the second one, and so on. You might say, well, that's not even really faster than clicking on it, is it? And I think you're right, but there may be cases where it is still useful. Like maybe you're on a laptop without a mouse and hitting those keys is actually faster than scrolling all the way over to the button. Or maybe you're using a full screen program and you wanna run a program in a shortcut without having to alt tab out first. I'm sure you can get creative with it. It's just a neat little shortcut. Number eight, this is actually a hugely useful one for some people at least. It's the Linux bash shell in Windows. Microsoft just added this in a recent update, much to the surprise of everyone. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, Microsoft basically allows you to install a subsystem for Linux, specifically Ubuntu, allowing it to actually run some Linux applications. And this includes Linux's bash shell, which you can kind of think of as the command prompt of Linux. It's not exactly the same, same idea. So great, but how do you enable it? First, you need to enable Windows Developer Mode by going to Settings, Update and Security, and then For Developers tab, and then selecting Developer Mode. Then, search the Start menu for the Turn Windows Features On and Off menu. Find where it says Windows Subsystem for Linux Beta, check the box, and you're done. You might have to reboot, but now if you search for Bash, it should come up. After installing the Ubuntu subsystem and creating a username and password, you now successfully are in a Linux environment running on Windows. And if you have no idea what any of that means, don't worry, not many average Windows users will ever need this, but it's definitely useful for IT professionals and that sort. Number nine is really quick and simple. If you've ever had Windows Explorer freeze up, you know that it can be a real pain and normally you have to like launch the task manager, find explorer.exe and end it. But there's actually a much easier way. All you have to do is hold down control and shift and then right click on the task bar. And at the bottom, you'll now see a new option to exit Explorer. Obviously way simpler than doing all that other nonsense. If you're having issues with it, it should come in handy. Okay, finally, the big daddy of hidden tools, which isn't even a single tool, but a collection of many, 
and it's not actually included in Windows, but Microsoft has it on their site to download separately. You may have heard of it, it's called the Sys Internals Suite. If you haven't heard of it, you're in for a real treat, let me tell you, and so good thing you stuck around till the end here. So on the download page, which I'll link in the description, you'll see a list of a ton of extra Windows tools made by Microsoft that are super useful, but not included in Windows by default. One good example is the Process Explorer, which is basically the task manager on serious steroids. It will show you a list of all the running processes and so much more. For example, if you ever tried to move or change a file but couldn't because it was in use by another program, you can use the Process Explorer to figure out what that program is. You press the binoculars to do a search and then type in the name of the file and it will tell you which program is using it. And if you want to quickly find a program in the list that has a window, you can drag the crosshairs over the program in Windows and it will go to it automatically. And that's just scratching the surface of features, it can do a lot more. Another good one is auto runs. So Windows already has a built-in feature for showing what programs it launches on boot up, but it doesn't always show everything. Auto runs will. So you'll run it and see a huge list of everything that starts up with Windows, not just programs, but services, DLLs being called, uh, what registry entry calls it, uh, even what media codecs get loaded. I think this one is super useful because there have been times where I know a program is starting up with Windows, but it doesn't show up anywhere. So this should help you fix that. And those are just two utilities in Sys internals, but as you saw, there are a ton more. I might need to make a totally separate video talking about all the best of those. You can let me know if you want to see that. So that's everything. Of course, check the comments. Maybe there are other cool features someone else knows about that I didn't mention. And if you want to keep watching, there are some other videos right here I think you'll like as well. And if you want to subscribe, I make new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And again, if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's just at Theo Joe. So looking forward to hearing from you guys again. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.